Hi everyone and welcome to my very very first violin tutorial. I've never done this so let's do it together. Let's jump right in. Five easy steps to a better violin sound. Nothing's like more important to me than violin sound. I'm going to be going through some basics, not so much like detailed technique and bow hand technique and all that. So, um, but just listen for the main pointers and I hope it helps you out a little bit. Like just one little thing you'll take away with you. First step is extremely simple. Look at the position of the violin relative to the floor. It should be parallel-ish. If it, my, the danger is that it goes kind of low and when that happens, the bow easily kind of comes off of our good sounding point and it makes it just really hard to have a consistent, good kind of sound point. Um, this happens a lot, like if you practice sitting down or you play a lot in orchestra, I see a lot of players, like their whole, everything goes down. And I just personally find it really hard to have a good sound that way. If you can do it, more power to you. But I would, I practice standing up because I think one, that's how I perform. But also I just think it, it kind of forces me generally to keep a better, uh, good, solid upright position. Step one, violin. Okay. Step two is let's get a straight bow. That sounds simple, but a lot of times if you watch yourself in the mirror, which occasionally I do because I think you see things in the mirror that you might, uh, you might not really feel that you're doing, uh, you want to make sure you go straight all the way from the frog to the tip. I think a lot of um, violinists, especially when you start, it kind of comes like this. Uh, which yes, you're staying on the strings, so good job but you can't have a beautiful sound if you're kind of way off and losing some contact. So watch yourself in a mirror or record yourself and see and make sure that in general, you know, your bows are staying pretty straight. There's technical things in the bow hand about how to do that. I'm not gonna go into that, um, but watch for your straight bow. Okay, next is uh, sometimes we joke about kind of like lanes of a highway in terms of where we play on the violin. If you play very near the fingerboard, you're gonna get a kind of soft, um, kind of covered, whispery sound, which is beautiful, but it's not a strong sound. So sometimes you might want a stronger sound. You're gonna play much closer to the bridge. If you actually play like on top of the bridge, it's gonna be squeaky and screechy and terrible. So you wanna get close to the bridge for the loud stuff, but not too close, um, or in the middle. So if we aim, actually, I'll, let, me, let me play this for you because I, I think sometimes I still don't realize how much of where you play in relation to the bridge, like how much it affects the sound um, projection and quality. So let's just play kind of near, you know, near the fingerboard, just a simple note. To hear that it's kind of whispery and beautiful, but very light, that's a beautiful color, but let's, we wanna make sure we have our whole palette. If you play in the middle, You can hear a little more, a little more contact, a little, little more projection, and uh, if we go even further towards the bridge, I was pushing, almost getting too close to the bridge, but that's where you're going to have your strongest, biggest sound. Um, so that's something to always pay attention to. Where you play. That was tip number three. Uh, for number four, I would just kind of say, just try using more bow in general. When I listen to people play so many times, I kind of say, use more bow, use more bow. And maybe that's just a personal preference of mine. Um, but I think there's something to be said for that. I think when we're learning pieces, a lot of times we, we start our passage work and we're playing very conservatively with bow because we're just learning it. But then you're, that's so ingrained as a habit to just play very conservatively you can't just all of a sudden get on stage and play it out with like a little more abandon and passion and, and sound and bow. So practice it that way, right? Just like force yourself to free it up. Also, anytime you have a really hard passage in the left hand, so something technical over here, sometimes the tendency is to go, ah, it's hard over here. Let me use less bow and just cause you get a little scared and we should do the opposite. If anything, use more bow and this will make this even more fluid because I think in our brains, it's all a bit connected, or at least I think so. <laughs> so just try using more bow, try it out. There might be spots where you really, really like it, or maybe you'll realize you're not as comfortable playing at the frog, so you avoid it, or at the tip, or something like that. So I think it'll be good just to take stock of um, how you're using your bow. Lastly, my most favorite tip is make a plan for your bow. 
or your bow distribution, where you're gonna play, how much bow you're gonna use. Literally, if you look at some of my music, and I'm sorry, I'm talking fast, I'm trying to give you a lot of information very quickly, and I have a bad habit of talking fast, um, you'll see my music, LH, which means lower half. It's my reminder to get there, uh, you know, UH, upper half, or I'll put all these notes about where to play, and I think, literally, you can put the violin down, grab your sheet music, look at it, say, all right, for this first phrase, you know, it's mezzo piano, I wanna start kind of mid to upper half so I have enough bow for that first pickup, and I don't wanna use the full bow, I wanna use two thirds, and then here I'm gonna just use it, you know, all this stuff, literally, it should be planned out. Because if you don't have a plan, I just, I don't think it's gonna be super consistent every time, I mean, I hope so, but for me, that works really, really well to, to just kind of step back and come up with a plan and just be super organized about it. I had a, a fun compliment once I was lucky to be the concertmaster at New York String Seminar Orchestra at Carnegie Hall. And um, when you're concertmaster, you're in charge of Boeings and stuff like that. And, I, and someone uh, behind me said, you, you know, you did such a great job because your bow distribution was just awesome. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so that, you know, that takes just kind of some work, but also when you make those decisions, hopefully your performance, like the musicality of your performance, will be, you know, kind of inspired and it's, it'll all be thought through it. It'll be very educated. It'll be, you know, you will have come at this for good reason. So your sound and all that stuff will just be kind of just the way you, you picture it in your head when you hear how you want things to sound. Um, also, if you write things in your music, sorry, last thing I know I'm kind of getting a little long here. If you write something in your music like, you know, lower half or you write some bow thing, you might realize that you practice that passage isolated but when you get there, you're actually in the wrong part of the bow. Well, then that's a problem. You don't wanna yank the bow and do something weird to get there, but maybe you'll realize, okay, I have two measures where I need to make up bow so I'm like right where I wanna be for that like that tricky spot. So anyway, just um, good luck with your sound. Those are like five quick steps. Sorry to talk so fast. Sorry to go into so much, um, but I really, really hope you enjoy it. And yeah, let me know in the comments like what you think or if you have follow-up questions or anything like that, but good luck and uh, have a good one. Bye.